Hello guys, sorry for keeping you waiting for this video for so long. Because even though it's called week 36 update, I'm actually filming this a few weeks later. There's a very good reason for this. I experienced quite a few side effects and I wanted to give it a few weeks of some protocols that I implemented in order to see if I could fix it so that I could tell you about it to add a lot more value to this video. I can confidently tell you that this has been a success so there's gonna be a lot of things that you can learn from this video and I'm sure that this will be the most exciting and educational cycle video that I've made so far. All right, so usually I go through my blood work first then I go through my side effect and other developments afterwards. This time I decided to change it up a little bit and we're changing the pace of the video. This is to keep it more entertaining for you because I know most people are not going to be interested to be listening to blood work related talk for 10 to 15 minutes nonstop. All right, so for those of you that have been following the cycle series so far, know that during the last video, the 29 week update, I told you that I was raising my dose from 250 milligrams to 400 milligrams. Up to that point, I never really had any kind of side effects other than increased libido and a few acne spots on my back. However, when switching to 400 milligrams, this all changed. So let's start off with the first one, hair loss. I started losing considerable amounts of hair a few weeks into my new dose. Every single time I would put my hand through my hair, I would be pulling out like 10, 15 hairs easily. Every single time, especially after showering, it would be very bad. I would be able to just grab them and it would be a lot. Now I, um, I, I'm totally fine with showing you this right now. It's only one hair. Why? I'll explain you. This is exactly why I gave it a few weeks before making this update video. So as I started experiencing hair loss, I imagined that because of raising my dose from 250 milligrams to 400 milligrams, I expected that my DHT levels were also increased. And since male pattern baldness runs in my family, I know that if I am gonna be playing with DHT derivatives, in this case, I'm not even playing with a DHT derivative, by the way, but by just raising the testosterone, I increased my DHT. So I started my hair protocol which I will summarize right now but I'll also link the longer video of my hair protocol that I've done about two years ago with great success. So a few weeks ago I started taking low doses of finasteride much lower than most people recommend you to do because I always try to achieve as much as possible with as little drugs as possible. Additionally I started derma rolling my hair twice a week. For those of you that don't know what a derma roller is or whatnot again please go to the video that I've linked right here I explain everything over there. After just a few weeks of using finasteride and using a derma roller, my hair loss has basically stopped altogether. Because in my opinion, getting only one hair out of your head every time you pull your hair, it's totally normal because we're still human. For those of you that have done DHT blood testing in the past, know that it takes about two to four weeks in order to get your results. So I basically had to trust my gut feeling knowing that that was the cause of it. After implementing the protocol and seeing severely reduced hair loss, I knew I was right before getting the results. I knew it! However, it was still nice to get the results, which I'll show you here on screen, and to see that indeed it was my DHT that was now out of range, which is much higher than I usually have because usually my DHT is in the middle of the range. Next up, my libido really became uncomfortable at this point. 250 milligrams, I could still kind of control it. 400 milligrams was absolute insanity. I literally couldn't walk on the street without checking every single girl out. <laughs> really, when you're using those kind of doses, especially with the way that my testosterone has been reacting to these doses so far, you literally cannot walk past a woman without checking her out. However, since I am in a committed relationship, and because it's my birthday, I get to introduce you to my girlfriend. I did not act on these feelings. My man. <laughs> I know a few people that have been on high doses in the past, cheated on their girlfriends and then blamed the steroids. However, I don't believe that this is valid. It's all up to you being disciplined. However, the libido was definitely there. But this time, it wasn't just increased libido. This was the first time I actually noticed a negative downside in the sexual area. My erections actually got less hard and morning wood didn't occur as often anymore. My first thought was that my prolactin was probably raised, so I went out for a blood test and got my prolactin tested. Here you see on the screen, indeed, my prolactin was out of whack. Now I was still doing fine and everything worked well. However, I noticed a difference that I didn't like and I'd rather be proactive than reactive so I started implementing a simple protocol in order to lower my prolactin. 
Many people in bodybuilding instantly use cabergolin. However, this does have side effects and risks affiliated with it. And since my prolactin wasn't all that high, I went the natural route. So I just increased my B vitamins, B3, B6, B9, by a lot for a few weeks. Additionally, I took a bit more iron also for a few weeks. Then I got my prolactin tested again. And here you go on screen. I went from, I believe from the top of my head, I'm not actually looking at the numbers while making this video, but I believe I went from 18.9 to 16.6 in the span of just two weeks. I know it's about a 15% difference. And this also resulted in me waking up with morning wood every single day again and everything else working better again. It might only be a small difference, but for me it really made the difference that I needed. And all it required was a few B vitamins, and some iron for just a week, maybe two weeks. So I would say that this is definitely worth trying before you ever use caber. Unless of course your prolactin has gone to the moon, then this will probably not be sufficient. Another side effect that I've been noticing for quite a while already, it also when I was using lower doses, 250-ish, after using that for a while, I started noticing that I got increased hair growth on many places, not on my head though, but everywhere else, my hair was growing much faster and in places that I never had hair before. I now have hair here on my shoulder, for example. I never had any hair on my shoulder. Also, usually the hair on my arms was just blonde and now I have a few thick black hairs mixed through the blonde hairs. This is all 100% connected to the use of testosterone. I am sure about that. Now, since I don't find this much of an issue, it's just a little bit of hair, I am not gonna do anything to stop this or change it or whatnot. I don't look like a gorilla yet, so I'm totally fine with just shaving it here and there. This next one is a little bit more serious. Normally, my blood pressure is 120 over 60. This time, all of a sudden, after raising my dose, I noticed that my blood pressure was about 145 over 75 to 80. Technically speaking, this is considered hypertension stage one. However, in my case, I know that it's not from a chronic source. It's simply from the use of anabolics. So I didn't worry all that much about it. Also because this increase is not that alarming to me. I made a video on how I controlled this raise in blood pressure about a week ago, but in short, with this, I also went the natural route through supplementation, food and exercise. And I managed to bring my levels from about 145 over 80 to about 130 over 70 in a week. The main driver in this drop in blood pressure, I think, is because I started taking three grams of taurine every single day. Now, a few weeks later, my blood pressure has gone all the way back to normal to 118 over 60 by just continuing this protocol, which again, I fully explain in this video. So I didn't use any blood pressure medication or whatnot, because in this case, just like with the prolactin, I wasn't really worried about the race and I felt like I could fix this with natural solutions. And I would say that succeeding in lowering my prolactin and my blood pressure in about one to two weeks with natural solutions is a testament to the fact that I know what I'm doing. I've said this in the past, but before starting anabolic steroids, I learned about anabolic steroids and all of its side effects for more than five years, which is why I feel comfortable running this YouTube channel and telling you exactly what I'm doing. I'm not a doctor and I don't want to cut myself in my fingers by outright saying that I give you health related advice. YouTube, YouTube is not, not a big, a big fan, fan of, that. of that. However, it's totally up to you to look at the information and consider if it's something that you wish to implement before using any kind of medication. Another side effect that has been building up throughout the cycle which I only recently noticed myself, by the way, and my girlfriend never noticed and neither did any of my friends. I started to hold a lot more water in my face. Look at the picture of me in January and look at me on a picture during a recent video. You can really see a big change in my face. I'm suddenly holding a lot more water. However, this is another thing that I don't plan to address because as of now, I'm planning to start dialing down my dose. And as I'm doing that, the water that I'm holding should decrease by a considerable amount. And the last side effect that I have to report was that it was much easier to get agitated. Now, don't worry nothing comparable to trend rage or whatnot, but I would blurt out things much faster than usual. For example, since I live here on Phuket and the traffic is pretty crazy, the word idiot would come out pretty quickly whenever someone would mess up in traffic and almost get me killed. 
People that have been driving here on Phuket in the past know that the traffic is absolutely insane. So that happens quite often. And normally I'm able to keep that to myself, but in this case, no, not at all. However, I'm not the guy that actually gets out of the car or gets off of his bike and starts to punch the guy or even opens the window and shouts at them. But I, yeah, I noticed that it was just much easier to just blurt out, oh, what an idiot, and then go back to normal again. But uh, yeah, it's uh, these small annoyances that you notice and then you're like, hmm, yeah, this is because of my high testosterone, right? Hmm, yes. <laughs> now, right now in your screen, I'll show you the blood work and you can stop wherever you find it interesting because I'm only gonna cover the parts that I find interesting, the things that are out of range and things that I actually plan to do something about. Okay, so let's go to my cholesterol. You now see my cholesterol in screen. My cholesterol on this test was 219 milligrams per deciliter, which is out of range. Me and cholesterol have never been best friends. However, we do see an uptrend since I've started increasing my doses. What is very surprising to me is how high my triglycerides are this time. That is not something that usually happens to me, so this is completely new. My HDL is 26. I'm actually not upset about that at all. It's only a little bit lower than it was on 250 milligrams because it was 29. And as I said many times during my past cycle videos, my HDL never went over 34 in my entire life since I started blood testing. So I'm not surprised about that at all. And I'm actually pretty happy about the fact that I only lost a few points while doing a cycle for so long already. Yeah, but as you can see, my LDL has gone up again compared to last time. Now in screen, I'll show you my longer term blood work sheet where you can see that it has been slowly coming up lately, even though I've been implementing a lot more cardio and whatnot. I simply feel like I'm not going to be able to tackle my cholesterol levels unless I want to use all sorts of medication, which I'm really not looking forward to. And these levels are not alarming to me as of now. Moving on to my liver function test, mainly AST and ALT is what I'll focus on right now. During my week 29 update, I reported that my AST and my ALT were significantly elevated. Even though they were still within range, they were much higher than what I'm used to. So at that point, I told you that I was going to implement a protocol. And even though I've raised my dose from 250 to 400, my liver values are now much better than before. So the protocol has worked. I don't feel like going over the entire protocol again. You will simply have to watch my 29 week updates in order to learn what I did. And now I'll show you on screen, my ester dial is 73. Now we're gonna get into the juicy part where I talk about my testosterone levels, which are very weird. And this is really a, the moment to start paying attention. So to get my testosterone levels, I had to go to another sheet, which I'll show you on screen right now. My total testosterone shows 3,241. Hey. That's kind of weird, right? For those of you that have watched my previous videos, know that I already had these levels on 250. What's going on? Also, my free testosterone and my bioavailable testosterone are all a little bit lower than they were on 250. Huh? What's going on? But that was exactly my thought. So I went for additional blood testing the two weeks after that. And I did it in different clinics. Well, the second time I didn't do it in a different clinic, to be honest. I went to the same clinic because I just felt like they probably just messed up their test or whatnot. But the second time was even lower. And then it really was really like, huh? What's going on? This is so weird. So then the third time, again, a week later, I went to yet another clinic and my levels were lower again. Now, let me show you those two results on screen right now as well. So as you can see, my second test, only one week after the 3200 test showed me 2200. At this point, I was like, okay, they must be messing up something in the lab. So again, one week later, I go to another clinic. This time the level shows only 2000. At this point, I could only make one logical conclusion. And that was the fact that even though the provider that I'm using, it is an underground lab, by the way, is a very reliable provider and is actually considered the best here in Thailand. But I feel like this time I actually got a bad box. So I started thinking back, when did I start using the new box? And it was right at the beginning of my 400 dose about two weeks into my new protocol. So it makes sense that my level has come down because I feel like I got a box that simply underdosed. So in order for me to check if this was correct or not, after getting this last blood test, I changed to a new box. And now a few weeks later, 
I feel much better. I notice that everything starts to feel much better. The gains are getting better in the gym again, even though right now I reduced my dose from 400 back to 250 for a little while. So there's only one logical conclusion, and that is that I got a box with underdosed testosterone, which seems to be pretty rare, almost never happens. But in this case, it seems that I got unlucky. I reduced my dose from 400 to 250 because I feel I'm reaching a natural ending to my cycle. I've been pushing my body very heavy the past year, and I've been gaining a lot of muscle and strength. Both my squat and my bench have gone up considerably, which I'll show you in the screen right now. As you can see, I'm doing 125 times 5 squat PR, which is about 30 kilo more than I was able to do during January. And in terms of benching, I'm doing 110 times 5, which I feel like is not even my max at this point, but that's considerably higher than what it was at the beginning of the year, where I could only do 100 times 3. Now the jump in my bench isn't as big as the one in my squat, but this is because during the year I had some issues with my tendons in my arm, which made me unable to train as heavy for a little while. Based on these 5 rep max PRs, I should be able to do around 1 rep with 140 kilo squat, and about 125 kilo times one bench. These are levels I'm pretty satisfied with. I was hoping for a little bit more. I was hoping that for squatting, I could get to the point of doing 140 times five this year. And for bench, I was hoping to get to 120 times five as well. However, all things considered, given the fact that I've only used very low doses throughout the entire cycle, I'm more than happy with the results that I've made during this first year. However, next year, I'm definitely going after those strength goals because I've been enjoying the process of getting stronger as time passes. And the last thing on the sheet that I want to show you is to statin C, my kidney test. You can see that my kidney values have come down considerably, which is another reason for me to start lowering my dose and just call it an end for this cycle. If you convert this statin C value into an EGFR value, you get 71. A few months ago, it showed 86. A few months before that, it showed 105, I believe. Anyway, I'll show you the sheet right now so you can see the numbers for yourself. So anyway, this is really getting to a point where I feel like I need to stop pushing it. Okay, so right now I want to show you the pictures of my current physique. You will see them here on screen. I'm currently sitting at 100 kilo and I'm very satisfied with the results of having done only one low dose cycle. Especially the one picture by myself in the gym, I think I look absolutely insane on. I'm really satisfied with these results for now. My current plan is to keep dialing down the dose, bring it all the way down to TRT, and then I will be taking it easy until April, I think. I want to really start focusing on my cholesterol, and I want to do something that I've never been able to do so far during my lifetime. Strong focus on what I want which is getting my HDL over 50. So I'm going to be doing cardio six, maybe seven times a week. Actually saying that I'm gonna do it, no, I started doing that a few weeks ago. I started doing cardio six times a week and I've been adhering to it religiously. So I'm very proud of that. And I'm sure that if I keep doing this all the way until April, that my blood values will look very good. And that's the moment that I plan to do another cycle. The next cycle is not gonna be anything crazy either. I now know exactly at what point I have to start implementing protocols. It seems that if I'm doing 250, I can do that for a long time with perfect blood work, make slow gains in, in strength and size and whatnot. And if I raise it to 400, I know that at that point, I simply have to implement a hair protocol. I have to watch my vitamins in order to keep my prolactin down. And at that point, I do definitely have to keep up with my cardio in order to keep my cholesterol nice and healthy. Right now I'm doing 250 for two more weeks. As I'm making this video, it's the 8th of October. So I'm doing that for two more weeks. Then after that, I'm going from 250 to 175 for another month. And then after that, I will dial down from 175 to 100, 125. And that is what I'll be running until April. And then starting in April, you will get new cycle update videos on this channel. This cycle, I am really planning to push it all the way, balls to the wall, in terms of strength, size, everything, but with smart dosing, 
and smart protocols, mostly natural, not too much nonsense, without losing my hair and whatnot, because I believe in health first before looks and strength and whatnot. So if this is something that sounds interesting to you, make sure to subscribe to this channel because I'm putting in a lot of work in order to document my journey and give you exactly what I'm doing in order to do this as healthy as possible, which I feel like I'm doing very properly. Thank you for your support so far. Love you guys.